I mean, look at this. This is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> when, oh gosh, my mom and my sister are in New York City in the snow. And when in other parts of my state, so many people have lost their homes. It's kind of hard when you have a day like this. It's kind of hard to sit home and make excuses to not get out and walk and enjoy this day while we have it. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are. Look at this. Hi. Um, you know what I realized I forgot to mention to you guys that I'm doing No Way November. <laughs> Um, I saw a lot of people that I follow here on YouTube uh, say that they were going to do No Way November. I've never done No Way November, um, but I thought this month I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. That doesn't mean No Weight Watchers November. It simply means I'm not getting on the scale until November is over. And um, I can see now the merit in No Way November because... November is very challenging. If you live in the United States, it's rough, man. You got Thanksgiving, you've got leftover Halloween candy. In my case, I've got um, everybody's birthday. Everybody in my life has a birthday in November. Um, my father-in-law, my sister-in-laws are at the end of October. My husband, my best friend, my mom, my dad's birthday was in November. I've got like just everybody. So there's a lot of cake. Oh, and then there's all the work people. <laughs> So there's a lot of stuff in November and, um, and it's challenging enough trying to track everything and make sure that I get water and make sure that I get activity. And then on top of that, to be dealing with scale results when you're eating all of that holiday stuff, right? Which can show up on the scale. So I'm taking the break from the scale for the month but not taking a break from Weight Watchers. I'm still counting points plus. And actually, you know, I haven't had a points plus Thanksgiving in ages and it went super well. I, um, I'm not sure I have a photo of everything. You know, my weight, my, uh, Thanksgivings since I've been a Weight Watcher haven't really haven't been that difficult. Um, the birthdays have been more challenging for me in November than the actual day of Thanksgiving because everybody I celebrate with is also a Weight Watcher or, you know, is, is trying not to, not to go insane on Thanksgiving. And so generally speaking, it's been pretty, pretty low key, not too bad. Um, but I was, I forgot what it was like to have a points plus Thanksgiving. And I roasted a turkey breast. I did a turkey breast roast, um, which was super hard to find this year, by the way. It made me wonder if it was not because of freestyle, because of course, turkey breast is zero points. Um, and I went all over town trying to find a, a, you know, where, you know, just the breast to roast. Nobody had it. And my mom found them. She was somewhere, some remote part of the county and she found them. And so she bought me one. The thing was eight pounds. It was enormous. <laughs> so um, we had this enormous roast turkey breast. It came out really great. Didn't do much to it. Just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper and a few herbs from my garden and that called it a day. So that was great. Um, my mom was out of town. My mom spent this Thanksgiving with my sister in New York City. She hadn't been back there for Thanksgiving for a really long time. And so that meant we didn't have her stuffing. But I am. Um, I did make the box. I'll put a picture of it right here. I made the box cornbread stuffing from Trader Joe's. First of all, easiest thing in the world to prepare. So easy. It made. I made two boxes because I wasn't sure. I could easily have gotten away with one box for how many adults? One, two. Four adults, three children we had at our Thanksgiving. Um, and one box would have been more than enough. Two boxes was way too much. Um, I was skeptical, though, because the box didn't look like that much. It, it's not a huge box. Anyway, very, very, couldn't have been easier to prepare. I was really worried about it, but I needn't have been. Um, so those were delicious. And I think it was... I, a serving, I, I was serving myself like, it was more than a half a cup. It was like three quarters of a cup. It was only three points plus. 
three. What? Fantastic. And, um, and the turkey was really low points, of course. Uh, what was the other thing I had that was really low? Oh, they had this amazing, um, as a sub, as a side dish, I made, uh, also from Trader Joe's, a, it was a shredded Brussels sprouts saute kit. And it was shredded Brussels sprouts. You got them pre-shredded and really finely shredded. And this like lemon seasoning sauce that was in a packet and macadamia nuts. So you roast the macadamia nuts first and then you saute the um, Brussels sprouts and a little bit of olive oil and then you add the sauce and you toss the whole thing all together and you serve it warm. Oh, and it had a little Parmesan. There was not a lot, but a little Parmesan to sprinkle on top. Delicious. I can't remember off the top of my head. It was also low points too. It tasted very, very rich, but it wasn't as pointy as it tasted. And then pumpkin pie on points plus is like eight points, eight or nine points, depending how much pie you are, you know, how big is that piece that you're slicing? So it wasn't bad at all. And neither have the leftovers been bad. Another thing that I bought from Trader Joe's, um, I bought it to make for Thanksgiving, but then uh, I ended up making the Brussels sprout thing instead was they have, um, people have been freaking out all over the place about the delicata squash, um, which I love, which I love. And it's easy to find here in Southern California, but the problem with me and the delicata squash is I'm the only one in the house who likes it. So I make the whole delicata squash and I can't eat the whole delicata squash. So I ended up throwing some of it away. I did this like twice and I was like, I can't buy this squash because nobody's going to eat it. Well, I swear the people from Trader Joe's like follow me around and, you know, just take secret video footage of me or, or recordings or something because this happens to me all the time. If only there were a way. I could have just a little delicata squash and not have to throw away any of it away. And Trader Joe's was like, we got you, Margo. And they have frozen delicata squash. So you just, and it's pre-sliced. It's pre-roasted, pre-sliced. And you just pick however many pieces you want to have. There's nothing really on it. And you zap it in the microwave. And it's delicious, perfectly roasted delicata squash as much as you like whenever you want it. It is brilliant. So I've been having that also with my leftovers. Anyway, so No Way November has been great because like I said, I don't need the, I'm usually not somebody who gets very emotional about the scale. I'm usually like, I, I weigh like every other day normally, um, understanding that my weight is going to fluctuate throughout the week. And normally I don't have like feelings about that. But during this time of year, when it's hard to know, is it my natural weight fluctuation or was it those two glasses of wine? Is it my normal, is this just the normal kind of swing of things or was it that cookie, you know? So that kind of messes with my head a little bit and where normally during the rest of the year, the scale doesn't usually get into my mind. So not having to worry about that has really helped me focus on the tracking getting my vegetables in, getting my activity in. I've been really, really good with my activity, even when I'm not working, which is great. Normally when I'm not working, I do a little bit less activity, but I've managed to kind of keep up the pace um, because I have more days off, you know, days during the week off right now. So um, trying not to let that slip. So I would like to know how many of you are doing No Way November? How many of you have decided to take a break from the scale or did you decide to take a break from Weight Watchers uh, for Thanksgiving? Uh, oh, I wanted to mention, I'll, I'll link it below. Anita, uh, what is your channel? Chit Chat Patty Wax, something like that. Um, Anita posted a really interesting video. I think it was today. Um, where... She is talking about how she let somebody talk her into ordering something in a restaurant that she later regretted, um, which happens a lot this time of year. You know, you're with people and they know you're doing Weight Watchers and like, oh, but you're doing great. Oh, but you look so wonderful. And it's Thanksgiving. Come on. Um, I thought it was interesting the way that she handled it. And I think I, I really appreciated 
your perspective on this, Anita. Um, I was thinking though that you guys watched the video. I think it's worth watching. I'll put the link. But um, but speaking to Anita directly for a moment, if I may. Uh, sometimes, you know, people say that they go, oh, you're doing so well and you look so great. So go ahead and have the thing when really the fact that you look so well and you're feeling so great and you look fabulous is all the more reason to not order the thing that you're going to regret later. Right. So it really, I've forgotten about that. And I really appreciate you bringing that issue up because it does come up a lot this time of year. And a lot of us are going to be dealing with it. Um, a lot of us have people in our lives. I'm very lucky now that I don't have this that much to deal with anymore, but I did from a lot of my life where you have people in your life who equate food with love. And so when you say, hey, you know, I don't really want to have that cheesecake, what they're hearing is, hey, I don't want your love. Thank you very much. Just get out of here with your cheesecake. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's there's a difference between saying, you know, I'm going to order this cheesecake and I'm really going to enjoy this cheesecake. It's 14 points. I'm going to get 14 points worth of enjoyment out of this cheesecake. There's a difference between doing that and feeling like I got talked into the cheesecake and I didn't really want to spend 14 points. And now I'm regretting that. And that leads to a whole other, you know, cycle spiral situation, um, where we tend to continue to make bad choices. So, you know, it's not saying no to the cheesecake. It's if you're going to say yes to the cheesecake, really say yes to the cheesecake. Don't say yes to things you really don't want to say yes to. It's fine. You know, a lot of people have, I've known so many, especially during my years as a leader, I've seen so many people, successful Weight Watchers, who decided, you know what, for Thanksgiving, I'm not going to think about Weight Watchers. I'm not going to worry about Weight Watchers. Um, I'm just going to have what I want to have and really enjoy that thing. And then the next day, I'm going to get right back on track. And that's fine. That's a strategy that works for a lot of people. Um, where it doesn't work is when you tell yourself, I'm not going to think about Weight Watchers during Thanksgiving. And the whole time you're going, oh my gosh, this is probably like 18 points, this little spoon of dressing. Oh, there's the gravy. Just ladle it on because why not? Look at me. I'm just trashing my whole year. You know, if you're berating yourself, that's not not thinking about it. That's not really being mindful and enjoying it. Your mind is elsewhere, right? So it's really about mindfulness, what, what Anita's video. Um, and so I really love the way that she, th this little story that she tells. Uh, I think it's worth seeing. So I'm going to link that below. But really, I would love to know, how do you feel? How do you feel about how Thanksgiving went? Are you doing a no way November? Did you decide to take Thanksgiving off? Oh, and I really, another thing about Anita's video because this is another thing I saw a lot as a leader. I never did this myself. Oh my goodness. But you guys, every single Thanksgiving that I was a leader in Weight Watchers, um, no matter what the program was, there was, I just want to tell you, if you find yourself, because Anita said that this used to be her, there was always a member, always, at least one every year, who, when we were doing the great plate meeting and going over what the points were for everything, there would always be one person who would tell me how she was only going to spend 12 points on Thanksgiving. I'm going to have the turkey breast and plain green beans, and I'm just going to smell the wine, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any pie, and I'm not, and I got to tell you, there's always one, there's always at least one person who told me, and Anita was talking about she had spinach salad, I think, for Thanksgiving which is fine if you love spinach salad and that's like your idea of a holiday treat. Um, but if you're having it and you're the whole time you're thinking everybody else gets to have all this other stuff and I'm the weight watcher in the corner, like, no, don't no, I'll just be here with my spinach salad and my ice water. Um, you know, every year, like I said, at least one person who told me that she was going to have spinach salad for Thanksgiving, or she was only going to spend 10 to 12 points on Thanksgiving when the average Thanksgiving plate um, on points plus, I kind of think it was about 50, um, on the newer program, it was 65 to 70 points for Thanksgiving. That's what you're talking about. Not one time ever did that member who told me she was going to have salad or spend 10 points on Thanksgiving, not one time ever did that member come back and tell me how awesome it went. 
It's a terrible strategy. If you're going to not think about Weight Watchers, if you're going to take the day off, fine. As long as that's what you're really doing and you're doing it mindfully and you're really, really enjoying those things. Um, cause sometimes it is about the food. Sometimes it's about the food. Uh, so we have to be, you know, it's a, it's a treacherous, month for some of us, but it can also be a really fun month. It can also be a month where we have gratitude and appreciation for what we're supposed to have gratitude and appreciation for. Um, you know, I just, I had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I hope you did too, but I would really like to know, like, what would you do differently? Is there anything about your Thanksgiving that you would do differently? I would really love to know because coming up, we've got cookie time. I'm a little nervous about cookie time, AKA December. Um, so I would like to know really, let's, let's reflect on, on Thanksgiving. I'm really happy with how November went, but I don't know what the scale is going to say. We'll see what the scale says. Um, but let me know. I would like to know how it went. What are you proud of? What do you wish you could do differently? And, um, maybe we can come up with some strategies for cookie time coming up. I'm going to end this video with some, just a little, a couple of photos from our Thanksgiving and, um, and some of the fall decorating, like I, I put a few fall things on my plate wall in my kitchen and we upgraded our, what was our Halloween tree to what was now a Thanksgiving tree. And I was going to swap everything out this weekend. I was going to turn everything this weekend to Christmas, but my kids said, can we do one more week of all the fall Thanksgiving stuff? So I'm leaving all that stuff up for now. But anyway, just a few little snapshots of how it went. I hope your Thanksgiving was beautiful and um, I'm really looking forward to Oscar us all having a very successful, happy, beautiful end of the year. And take care of yourselves. And I'm going to go take my walk right now. Bye.